Okay, so welcome back, and today we're going to finish up the Chapter 2 material, and uh, we're going to start doing uh, some applications here, and so this is going to be all about what we call input-output models. And so in practice, uh, these models are very complicated, and they have many variables, but in this section we're, o we're going to be using some simplified model so that you can see how these work. These are very powerful applications in matrix theory and economics. Um, was actually developed by an economist in um, the late 80s and early 90s and in fact he earned a Nobel Prize in economics for his work on this. Um, so input output models are concerned with production and flow of goods and uh, also perhaps services. Uh, in an economy that has, let's say, n basic commodities or, or sectors, the production of each commodity uses some or perhaps all of the commodities in the economy as inputs. Okay, so outputs are what's being produced. Inputs are what, we're, what are required um, in order to make um, those productions, the, the process, for the process of making the commodities. So, for example, oil is needed to run uh, machinery that will plant and harvest uh, the wheat which in turn feeds the people who drill and refine the oil okay so to produce the oil and refine the oil it requires um, commodities in order to do that in this case wheat so but then the machinery in order to produce that wheat and harvest that wheat um, is is needed uh, needs oil okay so now suppose in in this example let's just start with uh, let's suppose a simplified economy involves just three commodities agriculture manufacturing and transportation okay so now the production we, we so this is what they're giving us so the production of one unit of agriculture whatever that unit is let's just assume that they're they're appropriate units for each one of these so production of one unit of agriculture requires a half unit of manufacturing and one fourth unit of transportation the production of one unit of manufacturing requires one fourth unit of agriculture and one fourth unit of transportation and production of one unit of transportation requires one third unit of agriculture and one fourth unit of manufacturing so we so if we take this information and put it into a matrix it would look like this and this is would be the input output matrix for this economy okay so the way this works is across visualize across each of the columns this uh, the word agriculture and the word manufacturing and the word um, transportation and then also across the rows, or down the rows, I should say, uh, also visualize the word agriculture, manufacturing, and uh, transportation. Okay, so now in this input output matrix, it says so if to read this, for example, the first column here represents the amount of each of the three commodities consumed in the production of one unit. Of agriculture so in this case here in to, to produce one unit of agriculture we need to use one half unit of uh, manufacturing and one half unit or excuse me one fourth unit of transportation those are required in the production of one unit of agriculture and then likewise if you look at the other two columns same thing so to produce one unit of manufacturing it requires one fourth unit of agriculture and one fourth unit of transportation and then finally the last column in order to produce one unit of um, transportation it requires one fourth unit of manufacturing and one third unit of agriculture okay so now the first row corresponds to what is needed to produce each commodity so we know across the rows that's why I want you to visualize those words because across the rows these tell us what's required in the production of each of the commodities uh, across the columns here okay 
So we know this represents, uh, this row represents agriculture, this represents um, manufacturing, and this represents um, transportation. Okay. So this is what's, what you could would call the inputs, right? So these are the inputs across the rows, and then the outputs, right? So uh, you, as far as the columns. So these are the inputs that are required for one unit output for agriculture and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so you could um, visualize it that way, okay? Now another matrix that's also used with the input output matrix is um, is the production matrix, and the production matrix gives the amount of each commodity produced, okay, that is produced, okay, or it's called the gross output. So production matrix or the uh, uh, matrix of gross output, okay. So this is the total amount produced. So let's, for example, uh, this is also represented by a column matrix X, where each of the inputs, let's say, are X1, X sub 1, X sub 2, all the way to X sub N, uh, let's say. So now suppose, in the example that we're dealing with, suppose 60 units of agriculture, 50 units of manufacturing, and 48 units of transportation are produced in the economy. So the production matrix would be represented by X equals this column matrix, where we have 60, 52, 48. Okay, so this would be the, the production matrix for this example. Now, if we wanted to know or find out the number of each units, okay, excuse me, the, if we wanted to find the number of units of each commodity needed to meet this production, so this is the production, right? So here's the production matrix. This is the production of the economy. And then let's say we wanted to find out how much of each of the commodity, how many units, what are the number of, number of units of each commodity needed in order to meet this production? Okay, well, all we would do is use this ma uh, matrix multiplication, A times X. So we take the input-output matrix times the production matrix, and we get this matrix here. So what this tells us is that 29 units of agriculture, 42 units of manufacturing, 28 units of transportation are needed in order to produce 60 units of agriculture, 52 units of manufacturing, 48 units of transportation in the economy. Okay. Now, the matrix AX represents the amount of each commodity used in the production process. Okay. So the remainder, if, if any, must be enough to satisfy the demand for the various commodities from outside the production system. So now, in an N commodity economy, this demand can be rep represented as a demand matrix D. Okay, now, if, if no production is to remain unused, so let's say we're going to use everything, so no production is to, to remain unused, so we're assuming that it's using everything, then the difference between the production matrix X and the amount AX used in the production process must be equal to the demand, right? Because everything's being used up in the economy. So the demand should equal the difference between the X matrix, which is the production matrix, and that which is being used in the production process. And so this difference should equal D, the demand matrix. Okay, so now, for example, in this case here, the demand matrix would be equal to this matrix, our X matrix, minus what we just calculated for AX, which is going to equal this one. So this means that production of 60 units of agriculture, 52 units of manufacturing, and 48 units of transportation would satisfy a demand of 31, 10, and 20 units of each commodity, respectively. Okay, so now in practice, we know A and D. Okay, so we know A and D. So we know this, and we know um, uh, this, but we don't know. 
x. That's what must be found. Okay. So we need to decide, in, our, in other words, we need to decide what amounts of production are needed to satisfy the required demands. Okay. And in this case, matrix algebra is going to be used in order to solve for x. Okay. And how do we do that? Well, let's start with the, the demand equation here. So if we look at the demand matrix is equal to x minus ax. So an easy way to figure this out is, well, we want to be able to factor out this x. But re remember, we can't factor it out like we do with real numbers. We can't assume that, oh, there's a 1 here. So what we do is we put i in here. And again, we put i on the right because x is on the left over here. So we want to put i on the right so x is on the left over here. And then when, when we have the i, because remember, the i matrix doesn't change the x matrix at all. So it, we can rewrite this with the i, and it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the solution. So now we can factor out x to the right, and now we can rewrite the demand equation as i minus a times x. Now, if the inverse of a minus uh, x a, i minus a exists, right? So if this inverse exists, because remember, this is just matrix subtraction, so this is just going to give us another matrix. We could call this matrix B if you wanted. So now, if this matrix has an inverse, then what we can do is we can multiply both sides of this equation, which I didn't do here, but go ahead and visualize this. But I can multiply both sides of the equation here by the inverse of i minus a on the right, or excuse me, on the left. And so then we'll get i, uh, the inverse here, so the inverse times this is going to equal the identity matrix, which is just going to give us x. And then we're left with the inverse times d over on this side, which is where we get this final result. So if the inverse exists for this matrix, then we can write x equal to the inverse of i minus a times the demand matrix. And it's going to be, uh, again, just a multiplication uh, matrix multiplication problem like we did before. Okay, Just a slightly complicated, more complicated looking. All right. So let's look at uh, an example. So let's look at the demand matrix here. It says find the production of each commodity for the economy in, in example three. If there is a demand of 322 units of agriculture, 447 units of manufacturing, and 133 units of transportation. So here's the given information. So we know the demand matrix here is given. So the demand matrix is going to be 322, 447, 133 as a column, uh, column vector or column matrix. Okay. So to produce the production matrix X, we first have to figure out what A minus, or excuse me, I minus A is. Okay. Well, we know I, right, that's given. It's a three by three matrix. So since this is three, we're, we know we're going to be dealing with three by three matrices. So this is going to be a three by three matrix, the identity matrix. And A is what we were given before. Okay. So here's our um, production matrix or not production matrix, our input-output matrix, right? So here's what we started with. Here's our input-output matrix. This is our A matrix. And here's our identity matrix. So let's calculate this um, difference. Okay, so again, all we do is subtract entry by entry. And so when we do that, we end up with this matrix here. And so now what we're going to do is we need to figure out if this has an inverse. It may or may not have an inverse, but we have to do the element or row operations in order to figure it out. So we're going to set up our uh, augmented matrix again, okay, where we're going to have the identity matrix on the right side of the vertical line. So we're going to put a vertical line here, and then we're going to have our identity matrix. So again, we're going to Create an aug. Oops. We're going to create an augmented augmented matrix where we're going to put A on one side, or excuse me, 
a, I minus A on one side and I on the other side. So we're going to have this augmented matrix. And then we're going to do the element row operations, make this into the identity matrix, and then whatever's over here will be our inverse of I minus A. And so that's what we're going to do. So if you do that, you should get this the following um, matrix. So you should get this. Again, uh, try this both by hand and in the calculator, but make sure you know how to do this by hand. And again, if you cannot get these, again, uh, make sure you do these in um, uh, as fractions if you're doing it by hand. Don't deal with decimals. Much easier to deal with fractions than decimals when you're doing this by hand. If you use the calculator, the calculator will handle decimals fine. Um, but you can also make sure that the matrix uses uh, fr has fractions as well as I showed before. So now, now that we got the I, the inverse matrix here, now we can calculate x because now it's just become matrix multiplication. So we take our inverse matrix times the demand matrix, and now this is our production matrix. So this is what we have to produce. Okay, this is what we need to have. Now each entry in x has been rounded to the nearest whole number. Now the last result shows that the production of 749 units of agriculture, 961 units of manufacturing, and 561 units of transportation are required in order to satisfy the demands of 322, 447, and 133 respectively. Okay, And that's how we do it. Now. Use matrix A, so our input output matrix, to find the production of each commodity in a closed model and find the solution corresponding to uh, x3 equals 9. Okay, so in a closed model, we have, in this case, we have this situation here. So again, this is a different matrix. Okay, so let's use this input output matrix. And we have, uh, in a closed model, let's um, find the solution corresponding to x3 equal to 9. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we want to find the value of i minus a. Okay, so we set i minus a times x equal to 0, or the O matrix, right, which is the 0 matrix. To find x. So zero matrix is just a matrix of zeros. Okay. And so when we do this, we set it equal, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use i minus a, obviously. And what we're going to do is now we're going to take i minus a times our production matrix, which is x1, x2, x3. Okay, and we're going to set it equal to the uh, zero matrix. And then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply and we're going to get a system of equations. We're going to multiply these two and we're going to get this, this system of equations where we have x1, x2, x3 all the way across, right? So now we have a system of equations, all three of those equal to zero. Look familiar? It should. Okay. So now... What do we do with this? Now we're going to separate up into a system of three equations with three unknowns. And then what we're going to do is we're going to solve it, solving the system with x3 as the parameter. Okay, so x3 is the parameter gives the solution of the system this. So if just like we did in the previous section, we solve this using 3, the, the rightmost variable, as the parameter. And so we get the general solution of the system as 4 ninths x3, 2 ninths x3, and x3. Now, we want to solve the solution for x3 equal 9. So the particular solution is going to be when we substitute x3 equal to 9. And so that means that this is going to be 9. x1 is going to equal 4, which is this one right here. And x2 is going to equal 2. And so we get 4, 2, 9 as our particular solution. So what does this mean? Well, in the, the um, 
in the context of production, the three commodities should have a ratio. Okay, so now this isn't a point. This is production. So this should have a ratio of four to two to nine. So for every four units of agriculture, oh, is this agriculture? Is this, uh, oh, I don't know if this is, no, this is different. Um, so for, for, so for every four units of this commodity, you should have two units of this commodity and four units of this commodity. Okay, so these should be the ratios of the commodities um, for production. Okay, and that's how you um, solve a closed uh, system. Okay, now, finding a production matrix. Okay, so here are the steps to finding a production matrix. To find the production matrix X for an open for an open input output model, so this is only for an open input output model, find follow the following steps. So form an n by n input output matrix A by placing in each column the amount of various commodities required to produce one unit of a particular commodity, just like we did it in the beginning. Two, calculate the A minus uh, I minus A. That's you, since we have A in step one, so we just have to subtract that from the identity matrix, and we're going to get another matrix. And then we're going to see if this has an inverse. Okay, so we're going to find the inverse, if it exists, of I minus A. And so we're going to get I minus A inverse. And then step four, multiply the inverse on the right, okay, again, on the right, by the demand function D. Okay, to obtain x equals a i minus a inverse times d. Okay, now to obtain the production matrix x for a closed input output model, solve the system i minus a times x equals the zero matrix. Okay, and that's it. So that ends chapter um, chapter two. So again, if you have any questions, please write those down as you're watching the video. Take notes. Do the other examples in the section. Also, do these exercises. Do some of the exercises at the end of the section for practice. And if you get stuck on any of those, uh, or you're not getting the right answer, or you're not sure if you're getting doing it correctly, bring them to class. Ask questions in class. And we'll answer your questions and go through the ones you get stuck on and we'll do we'll just be practicing these. And again, I'm telling you, that's where you're going to find um, that you're going to pick this up much faster is when you come to class prepared, you watch the videos before class, and you bring your questions and your problems that you're getting stuck on, and we'll work through them in class. That's the magic of the flipped classroom. So until then, uh, have a great day, and I'll talk to you in class, and I'll see you next time.